Good morning and welcome you all to the Python in Data platform of the largest online Python conference in Sri Lanka, PyCon Sri Lanka 2022, organized by Isaac University of Moratura in collaboration with Matific Sri Lanka. I'm Hashini Sena Naika, the moderator of this track. Today, there will be various sessions conducted by our speakers. So, we invite you to stay with us throughout the day and grab as much knowledge as you can. At the end of each session, there will also be a Q&A round where you can interact with the speakers and clear your doubts. Without further ado, let's start with our first session. We invite our first speaker, Mr. Miranta Jaitanyakar, to conduct his session on hybrid machine learning and reasoning systems. Mr. Jaitanyakar is currently a PhD candidate in computer science at the University of Manchester, UK. In academic research, he has contributed towards improving deep learning-based computer vision algorithms using ontology-based background knowledge. His industry involvement has ranged from building AI-centered software with natural language processing to Python-based data analytics. Having started his career in the field of robotics, he has shifted his focus fully towards machine learning applications over the past years. Please welcome Mr. Jai Tilakar to the AMI stage. Thank you, Ashini. I hope everyone can uh, see and hear me clearly. Uh, I will share my presentation now. So uh, my name is Miranda Jaipilaka. I am uh, currently a PhD candidate uh, in computer science at the University of Manchester, UK. Uh, today, the topic of my uh, talk is hybrid machine learning and reasoning systems. This is uh, part of the research that I've conducted for the last uh, three years uh, at the university. And uh, in this talk, I uh, I want to give a brief introduction uh, to how hybrid machine learning uh, emerged uh, and then uh, show you some of the use cases uh, of hybrid machine learning. Uh, so to begin with, um, I want to start with more of a general question. Uh, that is, what is machine, machine learning? So I believe in the audience there might be some of you uh, who, ha who is familiar with uh, uh, with machine learning already, the different techniques in machine learning. Uh, but uh, in case there is someone uh, who is new to machine learning, uh, I want to give you this uh, view of machine learning, how to think about machine learning and how to get started. So uh, there are different ways of thinking about machine learning, of course, different points of view. Um, one very practical method of looking at machine learning that, that I find really interesting is um, uh, to look at it in a more of a practical programming point of view. Now, uh, we know in traditional uh, computer programming, uh, if, if you take, for example, an if statement like this, we say, okay, there's a number, if this number is greater than zero, you do something. If not, do something else. So this is how we used to uh, code um, uh, program and how we used to communicate what we want the machine, uh, the computer to do. So this is very explicit. If you see, like we explicitly say that if it's greater than five, do this. So this is a very explicit way of ordering a computer to do something. Now, this method actually hits a, a bottleneck when it comes to more challenging tasks. So let's take another task for an example. Uh, let's say we have a body of text. This is natural language, the language that we that we that we use to talk, that we use to communicate with each other. Uh, so, if we want the computer to identify that uh, a bunch of words like Barack Hussein Obama is actually a name of a person, uh, this is a very hard thing to do. So, and let's say, for example, we want the machine to know that a, a text like this is a date or a text, a text like United States is a, is a, is a name of a location. Uh, now, 
if we want to do it in this traditional way of programming, we would have to like list down all of the names in the whole language or list down all of the countries in the in the language and then then you know explicitly mention that this is a country or a, or a name of a person. Now this is almost not, I mean, really improbable, really impossible to do. So uh, what we then figured out is that maybe we can ask the computer to come up with this code. Uh, but to come up with the code, we give the computer uh, as input, we give it the text. Uh, and then uh, as output, we we give we give instructions uh, saying that we want the computer to tag these sort of text. And then we want to what we want the computer to identify these sort of um, uh, components of the text. Now, this is machine learning. So we, we basically let the machine figure out what to do and how to code the program. And then uh, to do that, we use mathematical uh, equations. We use uh, solving mathematical equations as, uh, as guiding the computer to, to do this task. So in a, briefly, this is a, a view of machine learning, very, very practical view of machine learning that I like to take and which I, I hope you also find interesting. Now, after you know machine learning, some of one of the misconceptions about machine learning is that most of us think that the neural network is what machine learning is all about. Um, of course, deep neural networks have had a lot of success during the previous uh, years, and uh, there is a lot of good results, great accuracies. Uh, it's enabled us to do a lot of things, but deep neural networks or neural networks, uh, this is not uh, what's all about machine learning. Machine learning is a vast area uh, and deep neural networks is just a part of it. Uh, to be specific, we can list deep, uh, a deep neural network under a topic which we call sub-symbolic machine learning. Uh, this uh, is also known as data-driven or statistical in, in some cases. Um, so uh, what is sub-symbolic? So uh, first I would like to list uh, a set of uh, other techniques that we can uh, find under this topic. So we have Bayesian learning, uh, we have deep learning, we have neural net uh, with back propagation, we have support vector machines, hidden mark models, regressions, uh, regression models, decision trees, and, and so on. Uh, so uh, all, the, all, all of these techniques are pretty much data-driven. They are learning-based methods. Uh, and one of the main features of this uh, set of methods is that the representations are implicit numbers governed by solutions for mathematical equations. So I will come back to this point and I will explain this with an example um, in, 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 a, uh, in, in one of the next slides. So, but the, the key point here is that we uh, sort of model the, the task in a set of numbers, in a set of hidden numbers that we wouldn't understand if you just look at the numbers. It's not human readable, but we are trying to model this problem into a set of numbers and we, we give it an input and we expect a certain output. Now, this is sub symbolic ML, right? Now, what is the next, what is the other side of the coin to this? It's symbolic ML, uh, also known as knowledge driven and semantic. This is not neural network. So, uh, as, uh, to list down a couple of techniques here would be uh, just logic proofs. So you, you might be familiar with things like O and and, and, this and so on. Uh, so we have a lot of research and we have a lot of, uh, we, we have big uh, evolution of logic uh, in, in the field. And then we have knowledge graphs, ontologies, which are uh, manifestations of uh, logic rules and then inference and then search algorithms and, and so on and so forth. Um, the key feature of these uh, techniques is that these are representations with high level and human readable symbols. Now, earlier on, before the popularity of neural networks, um, people thought of building intelligence systems in a way that we would, we would understand, we would be able to code it. So uh, somewhat similar to what I mentioned about explicit programming, uh, people thought that so, for example, if you want a robot to uh, clean the kitchen, we would be able to give specific explicit instructions uh, and a set of maybe a path to follow, uh, a, a plan to follow. Um, and we would be able to 
you know, come up with this intelligent uh, uh, system. But it was, it, it was not as trivial uh, as uh, it sounded. So people, of, of course, people are still researching about this. But then again, the 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 sub-symbolic methods uh, came in more more in popularity uh, because of good results. But this area of symbolic ML is really important as well, which I'll uh, explain it in the next slide. Now let's look at an example. Uh, in a symbolic system, how do you explain an apple? Uh, so in, in a symbolic system, we would explicitly say that this this apple. So Imagine a system in, 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 in imagine a system where we want to identify an apple. So we want to say an apple um, has a set of features. So the features are it, it is ori uh, the origin is a tree. The structure uh, is uh, in the body. It is round shape, size of about ten centimeters. Color is red and so on. So this is a very explicit way of. Uh, talking about an apple and uh, figuring out the features of an apple. But in a sub-symbolic uh, system, a sub-symbolic apple would be a bunch of numbers like this. We don't know what these, these separate nodes are. Um, we have no idea what, what, what these numbers mean or what the relationship of these nodes are. But in a way, the system has figured out um, a way to, uh, how do you say, uh, parameterize an apple. So basically, uh, explain an apple with a set of numbers. So this is subsymbol k and uh, subsymbol again. Now, let's compare uh, or the let's summarize and compare what we have discussed so far in terms of subsymbolic and symbolic k uh, ML, uh, and then uh, we can see that the symbolic ML uh, techniques are easy to debug. They are easy to explain because we can clearly see explicitly the different features uh, like we saw in the Apple example. So because we see these um, very explicit features, they are easy to control. Uh, we don't need any big amount of data to, to, to model a symbolic uh, 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 technique. Uh, or, and these are more useful uh, in explaining people's thoughts and they are better for abstract problems. Uh, abstract problems in the sense if we want to uh, explain very abstract concepts like um, like if we take the apple again, if we want to explain the concept of an apple, we can easily do it. But um, if we want to explain, I mean, it's it's somewhat different than explaining just one instance of an apple. Um, so, but the one of the bigger disadvantages of symbolic methods uh, is that they are built manually. They are very easy to, they are, they are very hard to scale. So that's where the biggest limitation is is in symbolic uh, ML. Uh, on the other hand, sub-symbolic uh, ML, it's a very robust uh, system against noise. Uh, of course, there is a big gap in, in, in performance. Uh, and then um, we need just less knowledge upfront. So this meaning that um, we don't have to know much about an apple to model an apple. We just need a thousand uh, or, or just hundreds of data points about an apple, and then we can let the system figure out uh, the knowledge about an apple. And um, it's easier to scale up these sub symbolic methods, and big data is required. But because of this, we, we come up with this uh, a set of limitations with uh, these sub symbolic um, uh, machine learning techniques. These are not transparent, these are very hard to control. And these are very data hungry because we need a lot of label data to perform, uh, for example, to get a good accuracy in a in neural network. Now, uh, so one of the things I want to stress here is that because of these limitations, we have actually uh, faced some challenges during the implementation of these techniques. So because of the high popularity of these techniques, we, uh, we see that these are um, implemented in the real world. So one of the very famous examples is this uh, Amazon face detection algorithm, which was used by the US police to identify people. And uh, surprisingly, it had a very low accuracy on darker uh, colored females. So it had a racial bias. Uh, the data that was uh, used to train the model was biased. And then in, because of that, the, the results were biased. And then because of the results, there was a huge impact on the society because 
people were taking decisions on top of these algorithms and then that impacted the decision making process so uh, like the, the the point is the because of this high impact we have to address these limitations of, of symbolic methods and this is where people thought and people started comparing sub-symbolic ML with symbolic ML, where they said, okay, these are not transparent, these are hard to control, but here we have another set of techniques, uh, which are easy to debug, easy to explain, uh, but how do we take the best out of both worlds? So how do we uh, combine, or I don't know, how do we come up with methods to you know, um, uh, get the benefits out of both of these techniques, or both of these areas that we have researched so far? So this is where um, it emerged this uh, area called hybrid ML. So hybrid ML is basically combining symbolic methods and sub-symbolic methods uh, in a way that we can uh, come out or in, in, a way can, in a way that we can get a desired output, uh, but we are making use of both of these uh, models, both of these uh, worlds. So, for example, here you see like a knowledge graph. So this can be thought of as a knowledge graph, this, this image. Uh, we have nodes, we have edges between nodes, and we explain, we can model some sort of a knowledge base in, 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 a, in a graph like this. So uh, you can connect this to the example of the above. Uh, and then we, how do we combine this with a neural network that is tasked with uh, identifying uh, an apple from an image of an apple? So how do we get the knowledge from here to here in a way that um, the limitations of this neural network is minimized and then we have a better result. So uh, this is hybrid ML. Um, we can categorize the different techniques that we have found so far in hybrid ML uh, according to uh, the inputs and the output types. Uh, so what we use as the input to the whole system uh, or the output of the whole system uh, there are different ways of processing this data. So we, there are different ways of processing the knowledge coming from uh, a knowledge graph. There can be different ways of combining this knowledge coming from a, a knowledge graph into a neural network. So people are coming up with uh, new uh, ways of combining uh, this knowledge. And this is where, uh, this is, and according to this, we can categorize the different um, techniques of uh, hybrid ML. Another set of points is that uh, what we call data in a symbolic and a sub-symbolic space. So data in a symbolic space uh, would be things like labels, uh, axioms, relations. So th these are very explicit. Uh, you can read them. Um, and these are, these are structured, as you say. So relations, they are very structured, to, uh, uh, very structured language. Um, now, in sub-symbolic space, we have images and text. Now, one might argue we can we can read images and we can read text, but then again, this uh, this data is very unstructured. So, images are a set of pixels uh, that can be very unstructured. And then, text if we take uh, text of natural language, the language that we speak, the language that we use to speak and write, it's really unstructured. Even though we have grammar and we have a syntax for our language, we use it in different ways. It's, it's very unstructured. Uh, and in terms of the process, in sub-symbolic and uh, symbolic systems, it's more or less the same process. Uh, infer, we train, we embed. Uh, th th those features are the same. And in terms of a uh, model, in symbolic space, a model would be an ontology. So an ontology uh, is a set of axioms. It, it is a set of rules, a, a set of uh, logic rules uh, that is used to explain a knowledge base. And uh, systems that are formed like that are symbolic, and we call them an ontology. Uh, and then, um, and also in sub-symbolic space, a model would be a neural network. Uh, that's an example of a sub-symbolic model. Uh, so next, I will go into the different uh, categories, a uh, few of the different categories of hybrid models that you can find at the moment in the in the literature and in the research area. So one task, so I, I've just named this uh, to give a brief idea of what they do. So learning symbols from data. Uh, so in, in these following diagrams, I, uh, I categorize or I, I uh, uh, 
highlight the symbolic part with a purple color background, and then I highlight the sub symbolic part with a blue color background. Um, now, this is an example. It's from a paper from 2019, uh, unsupervised grounding of uh, planned first order logic representation, representation from images. Uh, so, this is a task where you have an image, you need to uh, classify that image. Um, it's a German Shepherd in this case, it's a picture of a German Shepherd. And now we feed in this, um, uh, the prediction and to a symbolic system. And we want the symbolic model to infer around the, uh, the, the label and come up with uh, a set of uh, logic rules. So, um, so this set of, this ultimate set of uh, data can explain what a German Shepherd would look like. So this, uh, some of these rules would say, for example, a German Shepherd has a tail. A German Shepherd has black and brown colors, things like that. So uh, ultimately we we come up with an explanation, again, going back to the limitations of sub-symbolic methods. Uh, in, in this sort of uh, setting, we have an explanation now why why this is a German Shepherd. Um, so this is one way of tackling this. Uh, moving on to the next one, we can also use uh, knowledge to explain using a model. Now, previously we just explained using a bunch of um, uh, rules, but now we can explain using a model. So again, quoting another um, research paper from 2015, uh, we have a traditional machine learning, we have a traditional, let's say, for example, neural network here. We train and we infer as we do with neural networks. Um, again, we take the example of the German Shepherd, we predict and then we uh, put this into the explanation generation uh, symbolic uh, model. That it comes up with a model where what a concept of a German Shepherd would look like in a, in a let's say, for example, a knowledge firm. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, another type of um, uh, hybrid system. Uh, next, uh, we have using logical rules as constraints. So this is where we have only uh, a sub-symbolic uh, system. So let's say we have a neural network here. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are training the neural network. Now, in this, taking the same example, uh, we want to predict the German Shepherd, but during the training of the neural network, we want to take into consideration some of the knowledge we had about the German Shepherd. So, like I mentioned earlier, if we know that knowledge, uh, a German Shepherd uh, has black and brown colors, we won't feed in that knowledge during the training of the neural network. Uh, so, uh, I wouldn't go. Um, um, I wouldn't go uh, deeper into this on how we uh, actually integrate that knowledge, but then again, uh, we, we do that in, in, in some sense. So for example, let's say using embeddings, we embed that knowledge into during the training process. Um, and then uh, ultimately we get the prediction of the German Shepherd, but then again, the, the neural network is guided by a set of rules, uh, a set of uh, rules that comes from the symbolic space. So uh, ultimately, uh, the the network is trained in a way that it abides some of the rules that we can integrate that we can we can explain. So that's another idea. Uh, finally, this is the last one. Uh, informed machine learning. Uh, informed machine learning is a similar technique where now in this case uh, we have a model, a symbolic model like a knowledge graph. This can be an ontology, um, and then uh, we take in that uh, as an input in the symbolic. Uh, system and then we infer uh, and then we take in uh, take some data out of the symbolic system let's say for example ontology embeddings and then uh, these ontology embeddings are then again used to train used to uh, guide the training process of a neural network and then uh, ultimately to come up with the same uh, output so german shepherd predicting the german shepherd is the task again we uh, want to do that but we want to integrate also, we want to integrate the knowledge coming from a symbolic system, which is a knowledge graph or a uh, ontology in this case. Again, uh, so th this is uh, a, a paper that uh, we managed to uh, publish last uh, last year. So this is narrowing down to the area that I specifically work with uh, in my research, uh, which is 
combination of uh, ontologies with uh, neural networks or deep uh, neural networks. Uh, now, finally, I would like to touch upon a few of the favorite, my, my favorite Python toolkits to do this thing. So since hybrid machine learning is somewhat a new um, area of research, there is no such uh, huge, uh, there, there are no such big standards uh, in terms of programming or in terms of libraries uh, to do hybrid machine learning, at, at, at least for now. So we have to combine several methods. So in terms of symbolic, in, in terms of uh, addressing symbolic part of, this, of these systems, uh, if you want to um, embed an ontology, for example, uh, there is an library. So I will, I, I'm just putting the links here in case you want to refer back to the presentation later on. Uh, and then uh, you might have heard about graph embedding. So this is where you have a knowledge graph and you want to come up with an embedding for the knowledge graph. Uh, there are different libraries that uh, that does that as well. And in terms of the sub symbolic uh, side of things, um, to do model training, inference and pre-training model use, this is again with specifically with respect to uh, neural, neural networks. My go-to library has been PyTorch. Um, uh, PyTorch is uh, in in one uh, so I, I identify PyTorch as more user friendly than TensorFlow or Keras, but I, I use TensorFlow and Keras as well uh, in case uh, in case any of the um, libraries or any of the techniques that I use uh, are for doing those. But then again, PyTorch if you, if you, if you want to design a system from scratch, I would recommend going to the tutorials in PyTorch um, and then building up your system from there, that, that can be a really good uh, guideline uh, in terms of programming these sort of uh, uh, systems. Uh, so that's pretty much it what I want to talk about. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. So since we are running out of time, I, I see some some questions here uh, on the panel. So first question is: Is soft symbolic mean mix of symbolic? I I I assume that I answered this already. Uh, sub sim uh, sub symbolic mean means uh, 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 so okay. Uh, not non symbolic. I I'm I'm not sure whether that's a term that that's been used, but we have a different set of symbolic methods. So if you mean whatever which is not symbolic as uh, symbolic, that's not really true. So uh, there can be methods which are not symbolic or sub-symbolic. There can be methods which are uh, which are um, different than than most of it. So may, uh, it's not exactly non-symbolic. Uh, sub-symbolic is a different set of techniques, and symbolic is a different. There can be others that just not falling in any of those. So the next question. Uh, yeah. So when considering the subject area, we learn about artificial intelligence. So when stepping onto the field, do we need to have knowledge of the subject areas or just one specific area? I would. Uh, so don't get confused with all of the names or all of the terms that that's been used. So for example, big data, data analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. I mean, th these terms, I, I, I get it. It can be a bit confusing sometimes. Um, what I would say is that you can look at it in three different sections. You can look at um, machine learning. Sorry, you can look at... Uh, 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 yeah, so let's let's uh, divide it to first machine learning and then data analytics. I, I see data analytics as uh, a, a, a different section than machine learning, where you know we basically try to come up with some sort of an analysis, given let's say a table of data. We want to explain. We want to dig into some uh, tabular data. That's mostly the picture I get when when I when I think about data analytics. But when it comes to machine learning or artificial intelligence, we use these terms like. Um, Interchangeably, um, I want to think. Um, so there, there were main 
mainly two areas, which is vision and NLP. Uh, now, of course, we see that some of the methods that we use in vision are again used in uh, NLP. And NLP, so these techniques are becoming quite interchangeable uh, later on, uh, sorry, um, in, like in the recent times. But you can look at vision and NLP. So it is important, I would say, to have a general idea of what all these components mean and what all these components do. Um, maybe like maybe a few years back, the techniques were highly different, but uh, more and more we see that these techniques, uh, if you take, for example, technique like a neural network is, or uh, a transformer is being used on, in all of these fields now. So you you have to have a general idea, but then again, if you uh, when when you want to specialize, uh, you have to select a, a topic and then dig deeper. That's how you get a good understanding, uh, and then you you will get a knowledge. Uh, 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 you you would gain a knowledge which is transferable to other areas as well. So it's good to specialize in one, but it's good to have a general idea about. Um, everything and the way to do that is uh, pick, pick up projects. Uh, you're not gonna uh, specialize by just reading about uh, uh, these techniques. Pick up pick one project, something that interests you. Uh, go into that project and just uh, you know get lost with it. So then you will learn a lot. Of Next question um, is sub symbolic. Sorry, uh, that we answered that. We use the word algorithm in programming uh, and machine learning. Do they mean the same thing? Uh, pretty much, yes. Uh, we use some of the, so if you see sometimes uh, the foundation of some of these machine learning techniques, ma machine learning algorithms, uh, is a very standard algorithm in computer science. So uh, the we, we see that People take these standard algorithms and then they modify, they they evolve them to a to a place where we can use them to solve the equations. So that's then then it becomes machine learning algorithm. Uh, next question: How will we know which machine learning algorithm to choose uh, in a classification problem? Uh, so um, again, so. I'm not sure whether this is uh, related to uh, vision or NLP. Classification is a very broad subject. Um, so uh, there is no uh, perfect answer for this. Uh, there are methods where you can choose the different algorithms. So always, uh, uh, always uh, doing a proper evaluation. I, what I mean by that is what you can do is maybe choose a benchmark or choose a, a data set uh that as the benchmark and then you evaluate or you run different algorithms against the same data set and against same uh, metrics uh, and then you compare them uh, on top of a data so it's always good to take a data-driven approach rather than uh, uh, looking at the different algorithms and seeing what works well or what the features of those algorithms are the best way to do is is to take a knowledge-driven approach where you run a set of algorithms uh, on the same data set and look at the results and whatever the whatever that gets the best results can be uh, practically chosen as the best algorithm. Um, not directly related to but question, but what do you think about the profile? I think it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really uh, I've seen a lot of uh, nice applications of it. That's why I think it's really interesting because none of these techniques are that useful if they're not, if, if they don't have a proper use case, right? Whatever that has a use case will evolve and will will collect a big community around them. So I, I think it's really interesting. Uh, it would be quite, it would be more interesting if we can um, post that uh, on our own, but at the moment, I think uh, these models are big, like really huge. Only the big players can, you know, uh, get them. But um, yeah, I think I think it can be the future of uh, what. I, I mean, there, there's a long way to go, though. Like there's a long way to improve. But then again, uh, there's a, a long trip for that sort of uh, technique. What kind of situation? 
when we meet HybridML because normally when we do ML, they uh, don't. Uh, yes. Uh, so um, this is where, so like I said, hybrid machine learning is pretty new uh, even for now. But then again, there are instances where we use, so for example, uh, I, I, I'm not entirely sure but i think uh, if you if you are familiar with what uh, deep mind is doing uh, uh, deep mind uh, from google is doing in the uh, these uh, game playing algorithms they have a symbolic component in those as well so it doesn't mean that even though your data is uh, one way you can't use uh, hybrid ml because there can be different forms of hybrid ml right so it's not that you have to have a knowledge graph or anything like that. You can build a graph from the from the output of a neural network and then choose from the graph. I think that's what DeepMind is doing uh, with the Go playing algorithm. So uh, again, there are different ways. Uh, it's not that you have a lot of situ situations that this can be applicable, but more and more we see that in terms of explainability and then um, uh, trying to use neural networks in a way that to overcome those limitations that I mentioned, like the, the, the transparency issues and then uh, the controllability issues, uh, we, we see a lot of um, these sort of combination of methods being used um, in, the, in the field. What tools for machine learning are essential? Libraries. <laughs> uh, so like I mentioned, PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow, uh, these are really good tools. These are the industry standards. These are the research standards. Um, uh, Python is an essential, I would say, at, at this point, because there's a huge community around Python um, for machine learning. Uh, so the standard machine learning libraries, you can go a long way using those libraries. And um, uh, yeah, I, I would say those are the most essential and then later on when you specialize in, 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 in an application or any sort of use case then you will find more and more uh, more and more applications uh, more and more libraries that help because now for example if you are doing something in PyTorch and you figure out okay that's you want to come up you want to you know uh, get a specific output but there is no you 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 have to build some code base from scratch for that and there is someone out there who has done it already and then maybe uh, compile it into a library and, and release it open source. So, uh, yeah. But start with the standards, PyTorch and Keras. Uh, okay, another question out of PyTorch, Keras, and TensorFlow, what is the most industry used? Both, every, everything is used in the industry. Um, yeah, it depends on uh, again, it, it depends on maybe code base. So there, there are some use cases where the initial code base has been developed, let's say in TensorFlow, uh, and then later on, some other people have made an equivalent code base uh, in PyTorch and things like that. So these are re really interchangeable. In my experience in the industry, I, I, I'm using everything. I'm using all these, uh, all these uh, libraries. Uh, but if I were to choose, I mean, if I were to do something from scratch and choose, I would choose PyTorch because it's, uh, uh, you would understand when you when you do uh, things in both. PyTorch is more uh, a bit more user friendly, and it's been used more more and more in the research community as well. PyTorch more, more than TensorFlow. But then again, you have to use all of these at the moment. It might change in a few years. <laughs> is it better to master both TensorFlow and PyTorch? So far, on. better to master both. Simple. Um, yeah. Yeah. How features are filtered in the training phase? Uh, you mean in a neural network? Um, uh, so features are filtered during the training phase uh, using back propagation in a neural network. So uh, the if you read more about back propagation, if you go into back propagation, it, it is a very very uh, nice technique uh, that sort of filters these uh, things, um, filters these features into the different layers and then different layers uh, are become responsible for identifying different features. So um, it's basically using that application. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, do we have any more questions? So what are the best resources or courses uh, for getting started with ML? Uh, this, is a, this is a very frequent question that I get. A few years back, uh, I, I myself, I, I, I followed the Andrew uh, Nung's course in uh, Coursera. I think that was like the industry standard back then, uh, like the most popular one at least. Um, that's, that's still, I think that's a very relevant course. Uh, but then again, there are more and more resources uh, has come up now. Uh, there's a huge, I mean, even YouTube is fine. Uh, now there's a huge uh, body of really useful um, uh, content on, on YouTube as well. So uh, the, 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 the point here is that not choosing the best resource, but choosing one resource and doing the best <laughs> in it. So whatever the, whatever, whatever the resource or the course that you find, you, um, one way to do it is pick up an assignment project from that project, from that resource, from that course, and then just go go into it like you are building something, you know, seriously with it. You know, um, so le learn on your own. There is a lot of self learning to be done there. But the best way to do is pick a project, go deep into it. Uh, can you please point out few resources where you can learn more about hybrid machine learning system? Um, right now, for me, it's been like the typical research papers. Uh, I haven't seen much like a uh, much like a course or anything on hybrid machine learning. But there is a person called. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot his name. Uh, so if you just search for hybrid machine learning or uh, if you search for symbolic and sub-symbolic machine learning or some some around these lines, you can find different resources. There's, there's no like such one resource that I can point to you at the moment. Sorry about that. Are we out of time? Okay, I'll, I'll quickly answer another question then. Uh, tips of acquiring large data sets for machine learning project projects. Uh, acquiring large data sets. So some of these data sets are public. Uh, uh, they are open source. Um, you have to go to each data set and see like uh, uh, ImageNet or WordNet or things like that. Uh, Kaggle is a good place to get uh, data sets, large data sets. I'm not sure. So I mean, it, there are different resources. It depends on the. It depends on what you're looking for. You can always build your own data set as well. Uh, yeah. I've seen new languages like uh, GoLang and Rust popping up recently. Sorry, have I missed that question? Yeah. What are those, and what are they necessary for? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with any of those uh, languages. I mainly use Python for my um, my uh, purposes. Uh, maybe they will come up. Maybe there are, there are uh, good features of those languages. But then again, Python has a huge community around uh, it uh, in terms of everything, basically. Python, uh, not even only machine learning, but building uh, things uh, going beyond machine learning. How do you deploy a machine learning model? How do you? Take into it, take it into production. How do you build a web app around um, around machine learning? All these things can be done uh, using Python. So Python, uh, Python will be in use for a long, long time. Which tools are needed to use? I guess I answered that already. Uh, is this presentation available? I'm not sure. Ask the host. Uh, what are hybrid methods in machine learning? I ex I think I explained that. That's a that's a big question. I sort of address that in during the presentation. Could you explain what are the major steps to start machine learning from scratch for a beginner? Again, go choose a course, a resource. Don't worry about choosing the best resource. Choose a resource, go deep into it. What other subject areas are helpful in a career in ML and AI? Computer science. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, idea about data structures. Uh, and so on. Uh, other 
come other areas other subject areas become useful if you are thinking about um, a specific domain such as healthcare or if you want to you know apply machine learning in, in another sort of uh, area then of course and uh, some domain knowledge about that area is important but then again know your data structures and algorithms uh, and matrices Ma matrices matrices are important uh, sorry, uh, Hashini, there, there are a couple of more questions. Do we take them or? Yes, there's a lot of questions. I'm sure we can send the answers later by asking from Mr. Jayatilaka. So I hope we have reached the conclusion of this session. Thank you, everyone, for your active participation. And our special thanks to our speaker, Mr. Miranta Jayatilaka, for making this session an immense success. So we will be beginning our next session, which is on building an end-to-end -end data product using Python at 11.15 a.m. So see you at that time.